Okay, let's say you want to hide or blur out some confidential or private information in your Storyline screen recordings. The new media library makes this really easy. Now, as you probably know, you can't access these background images here on the slide. You can see down here in the timeline that uh, they're really, those background images are just baked into the background. You can't access them here from the slide view. But if we jump up here to the view and choose media library, we can find that original image here in the images. So if I scroll down, what I'm looking for here is the image that's on slide 2.1, right? So if I click JPEG 1, image 1 JPEG, and notice over here in the preview that this is telling me this is on two different slides, but right now we're on slide 2.1. So what I can do here is edit this slide in an external graphics program. Down here at the very bottom of the media library, we have this little pencil icon, and that's for editing the image. What we can do is edit this in a program like Snagit, which is brilliant for this, or any other graphics program that you have, and we can edit it directly in the temp file and make that change, and then we'll see it here on the slide. So I'm going to click Edit, and I am working here on my Mac, and I'm seeing Snagit on the Mac, but I'm not seeing Snagit on Windows, so let me just choose another app. Yeah, and there it is at the top. So double-click it to open it, and here's my file. Notice that this is the temporary file name right here for it. And let's just say I want to hide this URL field from my videos. So I'm going to select the blur tool. Looks like it's already selected and just click and drag a selection around there to hide it. That's all I need to do because we are editing an actual bitmap image. There's no layering. Click up here under file and then choose save. And that doesn't matter. I can keep this open or not. Jump back into storyline and notice right here for this image, uh, there it is, right? It's all blurred out on the file. Awesome. I don't have to export it and take these out of the, uh, export them out of Storyline one by one. I'm going to go ahead and close out of here, and we should see that same thing here on the slide. Cool. Now, there's still one last piece of this, and that is when the preview video displays or runs, we all see the original information, right? So the idea is, let me just preview the slide so you can see it. Everything looks fine here. It's all blurred out on the static screenshot. When I click the correct item here on the slide, what's going to happen is the video screen of this file is going to take over and we'll actually see the video play. And now it's notice right here that this is now displaying and it's jumping to the slide. So what I would do instead is close out of here. This is the screen recording right here that's displaying. So what I would do is I need to delete this, but before I delete it, take a look at what it's doing in the triggers panel. Screen recording action. It's jumping to the next slide when the media completes, right? Instead, what we probably want to do, since we can see right here in the timeline that this media is roughly about two and a half seconds, uh, we could say move that timeline in there and then move when the uh, timeline ends. That's one way to do it. Or we could um, jump to the next slide when the learner immediately clicks the hotspot. A couple of ways to do it, however you want to set it up. I think I'll just do it that way, but I'm first going to delete the screen recording. And we'll still keep the initial triggers here for the hotspot. Obviously, we don't need the play media trigger here anymore, but I could just double click it and say jump to slide, and we'll make that the next slide when user clicks the hotspot. All right, so we'll still get the hover effect, but when we preview this slide, we'll immediately jump to the next slide. We just won't get that little video preview of each of the selections. So we are removing that from our screen uh, recording. Let's preview the scene and take a look at see how this looks. Okay, so this is that first slide. We don't have to worry about what's going on on the left. Obviously, this is what we just edited. You can see up here in the URL field that it's all blurred out. As soon as I click this, I get the hover, right? And if I click outside of it, I'll get a try again. Everything's working. When I click it, I immediately just jump to the next slide. So that's how we can blur that information and still not have it display when the video plays. We need to remove the videos and then adjust how each slide advances to the next slide, but we can be assured that all of this is going to display correctly all the time because this image is actually what's been edited and we don't have any shapes or anything covering that background image. Okay.